Well, hi, and uh, welcome to tutorial 35 in the series of TradeStation Easy Language tutorials designed to help you learn to program in TradeStation Easy Language. Incidentally, if you're not uh, currently a member of our email mailing list, then please go to markplex.com, that's markplex.com, and join, and I will be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or release new programs. Uh, in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at uh, dojis, and in particular, how to get a higher frame doji on a lower time frame chart, and I'll explain what that means in a moment. Firstly, uh, what is a doji? A doji is where the body of a candle is small compared to the wick of the candle and you can see here that there's some dots plotted using the TradeStation standard doji program and you can see in this particular case that we've got a very small body and uh, relative to the length of the wick and uh, the way that we test for that in TradeStation is just by specifying a percentage in other words that uh, Trade station will, will determine this is a doji if the um, the difference in price for the open and close divided by the difference between high and low is uh, less than a certain fraction which we define as a, as a percentage we just do the modification by dividing by a hundred so that is a doji on a 30 minute chart what I thought it'd be interesting to do is to go to a a lower time frame like a five minute chart and be able to see the doges on a five minute chart that would occur on a 30 minute chart and you can see here in this particular case uh, same time same date as the chart we've just been looking at but this time this is a five minute chart and the reason that this is showing this is a doji and obviously this bar is not a doji at least uh, not unless you define the percentage uh, very high in which case trade station may say it's a doji even though it really isn't but um, the reason this is a doji is if we count back six bars in other words six five minutes gives you 30 uh, you've got the first bar here one two three four five six and you take the open of this bar which is purple and the close of this bar which is maroon you can see the very small difference between those and divide that or very small difference relative to the bars divide that between this which is the the high of this series of six bars which happens to be here and the low which happens to be here and uh, you will see that in this particular case that comes out as being less than the percentage that we're defining as an input and hence we call this a doji. Now what's particularly interesting is that if you look at a, a 30 minute chart you'll see that the time of these charts 738 839 etc start on the half hour and the full hour well on this particular chart then we could have a sort of virtual 30 minute bar starting any at any five minute uh, thing five past ten past fifteen minutes so let's have a look at the actual program itself and um, I'll just go through it and explain it so first of all uh, what we need to do is take the open of the little cluster of bars in this case the one we were just looking at was six bars now um, we take the open and we deduct the close of this cluster of bars and we take the absolute value abs value and abs value takes this if it's a negative it makes it a positive because we're just interested in the difference between the two we don't care whether the open is less than the close or the close is less than the open and um, what we compare that with it has to be less than the high of this cluster of bars minus the low of the cluster of bars and then we just times by percentage which is an input and we multiply by 0.01 to convert that into a um, into the fraction. So you might be thinking well why are we using uh, bars back here and uh, bars back minus one here? Well the reason for that is that the uh, the open will treat the current bar as the sort of zero bar the one before that as one two three four five six whereas the highest and lowest functions have already taken that into account and if you really wanted to just test that out for yourself which I think is always a good idea just written a little simple print statement here which says at the end of the bar print date time the highest so many bars back the lowest so many bars back and also the open 
bars back minus one. So let's just uh, let's just have a look at that just to prove to you that this thing is working as it should. And uh, I'm just going to zoom out of here. Go along. Incidentally, those lines and the text there that was uh, that was just uh, used. I did that just using the the chart annotation, the drawing objects tool. You can see up here that's not part of the program. So uh, if we just go to the end of the chart, and I'm just going to look at the easy language output bar. I'm just going to refresh the chart. Control R, and um, click on print log we should see some print log appearing shortly not forgetting to verify the program and then just go back and okay starting at the 1140 bar the um, open 6 minus 1 the open um, 5 bars ago so this is 1 ago 2 ago 3 ago 4 ago 5 ago the open 163956 and you can see that's correct there and uh, then so again we're looking at the 11 1140 bar and the highest of that period I'm guessing so 1141 2 3 4 5 6 is probably going to be this bar here uh, 63956 no it says 985 okay there we go on that bar there 63985 um, so you can see that those uh, those things are calculating correctly. Okay, but we do have a slight problem in the program so far which I'll demonstrate by just going in and uh, changing the percentage to actually let's make it a quite a high percentage something like 40 percent so this is probably not and let's actually just change that instead of six bars back we're just going to look at the current bar so this is going to uh, plot when there are some very undoji like bars appearing but uh, let me just zoom in here so we can see this thing a little more clearly and you'll see that we are getting a dot appearing um, on the the bar here and uh, what's going to happen is with the the bar that's being formed there is currently a dot plotted because it is um, a doji based on the calculation but what's going to happen is even though even when the bar is not a doji anymore because it was at the time the dot was was plotted we're going to find um, with data that's been plotted since we applied the show me to the chart we're going to get some inaccurate dojis so uh, what we need to do is just make a slight modification to the program and uh, we do that here. I've already actually done it. I'm just going to uncomment it. It's going to take away that semicolon. And uh, we're just going to put an else statement. In other words, what we're doing now is saying that um, if condition one is true, then we're going to plot a doji. But as soon as condition one is not true, then we're not going to plot. So I'm just going to validate that. Click the little green arrow. You could press F3. And uh, we now go back to the chart. What we what we should see is that um, that dot, if this bar is no longer considered a doji, then the the dot will disappear. And you can see here the dot's just changing from red to blue depending on whether it's a up bar or a down bar, as I explained earlier. So you've seen with this bar that the uh, the dot is disappearing and reappearing again when the bar is considered a, a doji, at least using the input that we've used uh, or not. So anyway, um, I hope that uh, has been useful. Obviously, these uh, these settings, uh, I'm going to set that back to something like five and uh, just go back to six bars there. Again, if you are not uh, part of the Markplex uh, mailing list, then uh, please go to markplex.com and uh, join the, the email list and then I'll be happy to uh, let you know when I create a new tutorial such as this.